Hey everyone, it was round six, the British Chess Championships today. And my pick of the round today is between two very strong grandmasters, Stephen Gordon and Simon Williams. Now Stephen actually came really close to winning the British Championships several years ago, but he lost in a playoff against Gawain Jones. But he's always been a really strong and very analytical player, I would say. And I'm pretty surprised he's not made the push to 2600 yet. But I believe he's definitely got the potential to be that strong. And I wouldn't say this was the best game of the round, but I think it's a good example of what you should not do. And you shouldn't over-attack, as it were. And this is exactly what Simon Williams does in this game. So in the game, Stephen Gordon is white. Simon Williams plays black. So white played knight to f3. Black played knight to f6. And g3 and g6 are played. And b3 is now played by white. So it looks like white's going to fianchetto both bishops here. And just play a very solid system against a quite an attacking grandmaster in Sam Williams. Bishop g7 is played, and now bishop b2. So straight away the two bishops are opposing each other. And it looks so white is just going to build quite a solid setup here. Castles from black, and of course bishop g2 from white. Black plays d6, and d4 is now played from white, so grabbing some space in the centre, which makes a lot of sense. Black plays c6 here, and Stephen castles kingside. And Williams gets his queen out straight away with queen to a5. Now here I think Stephen was uh, very clever. He played the move h3. So what this does is guards the g4 square. But more importantly, I think this is quite a good psychological move. It sort of entices black to now play queen to h5 which is what Williams played in the game so queen h5 attacking this h3 pawn of course king h2 could be played but black can just play knight g4 check and this can't be taken because the h pawn is pinned after king g1 black can just move the knight back to f6 and maybe go for a free fall repetition if both players wished but I think Stephen now knew what Simon was going to do so in the game he played g4 hitting the queen and here I think Williams just overcommitted. I think he should play queen a5 here and after knight bd2 and h5 I feel like black's doing okay if g5 play knight to h7 and white can play h4 so white's just marching his pawns up but this does have a weakening effect on the king black can just continue with rook d8 e3 and maybe knight to f8 and I don't see anything wrong with black's position here if anything, I feel like whites maybe over-pressed their pawns on the king's side. And I feel like black would have a decent game here. So after g4, Simon likes to attack, and he sacrificed his bishop with bishop takes g4. And white recaptures, and now knight takes g4. So blacks just sacrificed their bishop for two of white's pawns. And to be honest, I'm not entirely sure why. Just due to the fact that actually black isn't actually threatening anything in this position at the moment. And black seems rather underdeveloped, and there's no real way to continue the attack here. So this sacrifice seems premature to me. And Stephen now just played knight bd2, developing another knight. f5 was played, so stopping white from playing moves like knight to e4. And white actually played this game really well. I'll give you two examples of moves that wouldn't work in this position. The first one is e4. If white plays a move like e4 here, this is just terrible, because after f takes e4... Knight takes e4, black can play rook takes f3, and then black is threatening something. He's threatening mate on h2 with the queen and knight. So after f5, we need to recognise that black's main attack is going to come here. And we've got a knight protecting this at the moment, so we need to be really careful with this f3 knight. c4 is another example of a bad move, just because then when black can play e5 here, and it threatens moves like e4, so if d takes e5 here, black can play bishop takes, and after bishop takes, take with the d-pawn, and again e4 is threatened here, white can play rook e1, but after e4, white has to play knight to f1 to defend the h2 square, and they have to give the piece back with e takes f3, e takes f3, and black's got a better position here, no doubt. So those are two examples of where whites could have gone wrong, but Stephen Gordon is a very strong player, and he recognises that black's only chance is to attack h2 here. So for this reason he played rook to e1. So what this does is allows knight to f1 if need be. And also 
bike now maybe thrust this e pawn up the board to e3 or e4 when it suits them. So William has played knight to d7 trying to get another piece into the attack. And actually in this position white can play e4 now. Because if f takes e4, knight takes e4, black can't play rook takes f3 because queen can capture. And if queen h2 check, white can play king f1. And this rook on e1 has moved so it's allowed white to escape compared to the previous variation that I showed. After knight d7 though, Stephen was extra cautious. He played knight to f1. So this just guards the h2 square and there's no real attack for black now. Knight df6 was played, so maybe threatening knight to e4. But again, white played this really well. He played e3 here. Knight to e4 was played. But then just played rook to e2 to guard this f2 pawn. And again, there's no attack for black now. If black tries e5 in this position, white can capture. And if captures, just play queen d7. And if rook f7, play queen to e6. So white's getting some activity here. Rook d8 and rook a e1. And white's pretty solid. If knight c5, we can play queen c4 back. And if knight to e4, just play moves like knight to h2 and try and trade some of these pieces because white's got an extra one of them. In the game, Williams played g5. And Gordon just played knight to d2. So trying to trade the knight on e4. So Williams moves it back to f6. But white can now just play e4. And I really think that white's just starting to get into the driving seat here. F takes e4 was played. Knight takes e4 was played. And of course black didn't want to swap off so they moved to knight to d5. But Stephen just played knight to g3 hitting the queen. And queen h4 was played in the game. Queen f7 was an idea maybe. But then I think white can just play bishop takes d5, c takes d5. And queen d2 to protect this f2 square. Black can play queen f3, but that looks scarier than it actually is. White can play rook a e1. After h6 to defend g5, white can actually take on e7. And even if knight takes f2 here, white can just play queen e3 and tr try and trade queens and swap pieces off. So it's very easy for white now. So after Stephen played knight e g3, queen h4 was played to maintain this h2 idea. But white can just trade on d5, which is what Stephen played. Bishop takes d5, c takes d5, and now just queen d3. Trying to gain some active play against black. In the game, black played knight to h6, and now white just crashes in with rook takes e7. Rook f4 was played, but now just queen b5 from white. Black doubles rooks in the f-file, but now white's just picking up material. Queen takes b7, threatening rook takes g7 with a check which is very dangerous so knight to f5 was played white's got to be a bit careful because they can't take on f5 due to queen takes f2 from the rook and queen so black does have some attack but white has to be a little cautious but in the game stephen just played the best move queen takes d5 with check king h8 was played and again white can't take on f5 just due to queen takes f2 if king h1 suddenly after rook takes the knight, black's actually starting to win this game. So white has to be a bit careful here. But Stephen just finds the best move for white. A very good defensive game from him so far. He just plays rook to e4, offering the trading of rooks. Black plays queen g4, and now knight to h2 is played, hitting the queen. The queen moves to h3, and now I just trades everything. Rook takes f4, g takes f4, and the knights are traded, and just queen f3 trying to trade queens. Simon plays queen to h4, but after king h1, black just resigns here, and white wins the game. This is due to the fact that white can just play rook g1, and even sacrifice this rook on g7 if they want to, and there's also back rank ideas with queen to a8 here. For instance, if black now plays rook to h5, threatening mate on h2, white just wins with queen a8 check, and if bishop f8, just queen takes f8 is checkmate for white. So white's position is just too strong, so that's why Williams resigned. So the reason why I wanted to just have a look at this game was because there's no need to take on g4 with the bishop here, it doesn't really do anything. 
And I know it's fun and great to be an attacking player, but sometimes it's just simple just to play the not natural move. Like, just go back with Queen A5. And Black has a nice game here, so I'm not sure why Simon decided to take on G4. Maybe just fancied it. But at the end of the day, after Bishop takes G4 and Knight takes G4, this just seems a lot better for White. There's not really any attack for Black here. Maybe if the Knight was already on D7, there might be something here. But there's just too many moves to make for Black to build up an attack. And ultimately, Stephen's a very strong player. And it's going to be really hard to break him down, especially when White's just a piece up. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. And I'll be back with another game from round 7 tomorrow. Please drop a like, comment or subscribe to the channel if you want to watch more videos in the future. See you next time.